Thank you to Saul Brooks' wife, Cindy, for making me these beautiful earrings. I emailed Saul, but I haven't heard back, so I don't know if he saw it, but thank you. That was super, super nice. Super I like kind. presents. They make me happy. Sure. And you like crafts? <laughs> I love crafts. I haven't been crafting recently because it's summer and I mainly knit, uh, but I'm going to knit in the winter at the end. That's my story. That's a fine story. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, it's that time. We were supposed to do the thing. Yeah. Oh, I got a new hoodie. Look, it's my Witcher hoodie. Okay, now I'll do the thing. The thing? Oh, that thing. Oh, God. I, I fail. You do? Just wearing my sub. <laughs> oh, really? And I'm, I'm wearing my root beer. Sorry. Sorry, nothing cool, nothing amazing. Uh, I wish I brought a hair tie downstairs. Oh, I gotta write that guy about those sprocket watches. Uh, I thought you were gonna say, ooh, I have a hair tie. No, I do not have a hair tie. <laughs> I have some hot glue. That won't work. Wait, you, you, oh, found, a, you found a hot glue gun? No. Say you I lost found, it like a year ago. No, I found some hot glue. Oh. Well, I haven't seen the hot glue gun. Wait, wait, I did see the hot glue gun somewhere. Was recently. it in the garage? I think it was in the garage. Where? I remember looking at it and saying, oh, the hot glue gun. I didn't, didn't know you needed it. I, I, didn't we just say that I like to craft? Yeah. I need the hot glue gun. Okay, well then I will look for it because I have to clean the, the garage anyway. Okay, now I'll do that thing. But I'm really tired, so I'm going to do my best. Whew, from Eric Flax. Hi, Spencer and Sabrina. I have been enjoying your videos for some time now and glad that Spencer and I share a love for a 1968-1675 root beer, yet Spencer's looks a bit better than mine. Out of all wow. the videos of yours I have watched, I have never seen any videos on the Seiko Kinetic Sportra line of watches. I'm not even sure I remember you ever mentioning them or even being asked about them. I have one, a 7L220ADO, and while it is a hefty watch, I find the dial is crammed with stuff and the actual time complication is small and the chronograph complication complication is that right mm -hmm. oh, too too large uh what are your thoughts on the kinetic watches they seem to be a middle between quartz and automatic watches sabrina my 10 year old daughter is getting into watches in her first pick with a small swatch yay thanks for the great video now, um that that period of well kinetics i i don't want to say i have a problem with them but the, the, i guess i kind of have a problem with them <laughs> my issue is that they don't I mean, it's a nice compromise. Is you want to have, you know, quartz accuracy with a watch that you feel a physical connection to. So it's you're winding it by wearing it. In a sense, you're charging it by wearing it. But the problem is, is that the kinetic, the kinetic power system doesn't really last. Like I have, I have a couple kinetics, um, and they, you know, you can get them up to six months charge, six months charge. And but I find that the charge will fail in a couple of months, and that they tend to sort of go bad fairly quickly. Um, Seiko's rechargeable solar technology even even isn't isn't is hit or miss. I, I had a fellow who wants to get me one of the I think the the e ink LCD watches that's solar powered, and he says the capacitor is almost dead. It won't hold a charge for even a day. And this is a watch that was up until recently still being sold. Um, those Sporturas, I remember. I remember. When we first came back to town, we went to Garwood Jewelers, mm -hmm. and we went in there, and they had a number of those big Sporturas, and I was looking at it, I was like, that's nuts. And they had one that was like, they had that had the one one hundredths um, uh, dials, so it was like, mm -hmm. it was really cool. They were a little big and a little busy for me. Uh, and also, but I think maybe this is the big thing, um, the period that I focus on, those were made afterwards. Like, I really focus on, um, Really, on like 1960s and 1970s stuff, grading into 1980. Sportura, that's like, uh, that's like 2000s. That's like aughts and, and teens. Uh, so a little after what I do. I don't have a problem with them. They're just not my thing. From Neil Singupta. Hi, Sabrina and Spencer. Great show. I'm afraid I now cannot unsee the 12 o'clock marker on my sumo. It's her fault. She brought it up. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't? No, you did. I did. And I'm the one that said what it was because uh, you were embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. It's just, you know, the world has enough unpleasantness. We don't need to add anymore. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, sorry, I just remembered this song from when I was in high school, and it said something about, you've got a camel toe. So I don't know! <laughs> okay, anyway, thanks for answering my question on last Friday's mail call, just as an update. My bracelets broke on my vintage Seikos as soon as I got them and started wearing them, which is why I was looking for modern bracelets. I'm having them fixed at the moment, but want to preserve them for posterity. My question for this week is, how did you build up your collection of watches? What started it all? What do you mean about getting job lots? What do you mean by getting hidden gems in the job lots? Yes, I'm a Star Trek fan and have been for many, many years. Would love a Seiko, would love a Seiko watch and Star Trek combined video. That was a lot of questions. That was a lot of questions. Um, what started me in, in life, I don't know, I always liked watches. I remember my granddad had a wooden box that was originally for like aftershave or something, but he, he would buy cheap watches, cheap quartz watches, and when they would die, he would just throw them in the box. And I always thought that was a box of treasures. I always thought that was neat. Um, and then I had a friend in junior high who traded me a watch for a t-shirt, uh, and it was a nice watch. It was an old Gerard Perigo, and I wore it until it stopped working. And then I tried to get it repaired at Garwood Jewelers, and their local guy was like, it's not worth repairing. And I, I tried to, I basically, I fiddled with it myself and got it to the point that it worked again. Uh, but then the strap broke and my, I put it in the pocket of my shorts because it was summer. And then my mom put, I was like 14 at the time, my mom put my shorts through the washer and the dryer. And then the watch was, of course, destroyed. And even though it had a gold case, she threw it away. Uh, but um, I don't know, modern, uh, I... I just liked watches, and uh, there was a guy at my old job who had a 6309 Diver. I thought it was really cool. And then I started looking for him, and then here we are. I, I got a lot of these watches. A job lot, or a lot of watches, is literally going like Seiko watch lot on eBay. Seiko watch lot. You'll see. You'll you'll be blinded by how many. Yeah, you can say a lot of anything. Lot. Like lot. I do lots of baby clothes and stuff. And right. it comes up with a billion things. Right, and so it's always fun to dig through all these lots, and some, the vast majority of them are really beaten or not worth your investment. But the thing is, is when you're looking through a job lot and you see a treasure, you see that's a rare watch, that's something that's special. It doesn't happen as much as it used to, because um, eBay is so combed through, but because eBay is so big and there's so much content, you can cut those searches a bunch of different ways. And if you're willing to put in the time to dig through the auctions, you can find treasures. They are out there. It's just a matter of digging. I mean, Larry Larry Boulogne of Uncle Seiko, I think all he does is comb through eBay. I mean, he finds stuff I have no idea. I mean, it comes up and he buys stuff within seconds of it appearing on eBay. That's how he does a lot of his stuff. He's come up with some amazing things. Did I get all of his questions? I don't know. Okay, let's see. There was, how did you build up your collection of watches? What started it all? Uh, what do you mean by getting job lots? What do you mean by getting hidden gems? There you go. I did. Wow. You did it. I did it. From Wayne Yip, just saw this posted on one of the Facebook watch groups today. Have you heard of and seen a Seiko Quartz SQ155 H238170? I believe it was from around 1987. Woo! Uh, it's a very cool Seiko Quartz SQ with tuna-like shrouds, but the case is totally different. Looks almost steampunk-like. At least the example I saw gave me that impression. Just curious if you've seen one, or maybe perhaps have one hidden in your house of Seiko treasures and gems. I can't even find any photos of it other than the person who posted it. Uh, if you're curious, I can upload to my Instagram and you can see it there. Uh, I, I will find and upload a picture of that thing here. I'll try. Um, I looked at that picture. I looked at pictures of it. It's um, Seiko. One thing Seiko has always done is crank out a billion different models. And at that particular point, um, Quartz was taking over everything, and they were really focusing on that. And they had a wide variety of sports divers, especially. I've never seen one. I certainly don't own one. Um, I don't know. It's a it's a basic movement. The 5H is basically the 7N. They're the two versions of the same thing. And Seiko made them and used them for a really long time. They're a good basic movement. Um, 
more sort of on the disposable side of things. They're not really meant to be serviced, though I can and have serviced them. Um, I don't know. They're just it's just interesting. You can find these little you know odd models that say go cranked out for a little bit of time and you'll find that they shouldn't be terribly expensive and most people have never heard of them which gives you something unique John Boy of Alaska Spencer what are those tweezers you use the ones with the little downturn point um, that you use to point at stuff in the same vein do you have a specific tweezer that you use regularly thanks in advance oh and sorry Sabrina but Enterprise was a great little series yeah. Enterprise was a great little series. Those are um, those are Bergeron number sevens, I believe. But those are really worn. Um, if you get them when they're fresh and they're they're really 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 super sharp, they're they're one of the ones that you use. Like I have another set that I only use for when you're fooling with hairsprings. Um, another good brand for uh, tweezers is Vigor, V I G O R. But they're they're a Japanese company. But their their stuff is nice. I have a good amount of Vigor. Uh, stuff like my demagnetizers figure and my um, my, my main crystal press uh, is them as well. I mean, it's really good stuff. But those are just, I don't know, they're different things. They're nice because you can hold those tweezers flat and yet still be in there. There's a, there's If you look at jewelers' tweezers, there's all kinds of variations on there. I tend to use three different ones, but those I use a lot. What? My hair's bugging me. Sorry. Okay. Do you want me to get a hat? No. Okay. You don't have one down here anyway. Sure I do. Where? There's probably a hat in there. Oh, God. Yeah, he'll end up giving me his German drinking hat. Yeah, it's, it, I got it at Oktoberfest in 1999. Uh, <laughs> I look great. Though it's kind of smashed. I'm not going to get it and put it on. No. <laughs> From Julie Hill, thrift shops... Here in the UK, we call them charity shops, and they're popular for various reasons, one unacceptable reason being the dramatic increase in poverty. Picked up some bargains over the years, and you can still, you still can if you have a good eye and know what, you, what to look for. We also have car boot fairs, where people turn up in their cars, vans, and sell their gear, another place to find a bargain. I don't think we have car boot things. I've read about them. It's not like an East Coast. I've, I've, ne I've never even seen The only place I've ever personally seen that with my own eyes was in Germany. Really? I thought that some place in the U.S. does it. I mean, it's, it, it makes sense to me, but I think it's really like a cultural thing. Like in Germany, they just do it. I remember once we I was screwing around somewhere outside of Berlin, I don't remember what, and uh, they had well, I, there were all these cars in this parking lot between these two buildings where clearly a building once had been and turned into a parking lot. And all these cars were in there with the backs open, and I went wandering in there, and it was... It was a flea market out of trunks, so the, but I guess that's the way they do it. No, because like I'm from New York, where by Massachusetts and Connecticut, and we call them tag sales, but they're actually yard sales. But that's like the closest thing I can mm -hmm. think of to. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just weird. The thought of buying something out of someone's car is weird. Too. My my military field telephone I got out of somebody's trunk of their car. I know people sell guns out of the trunks. Of yeah, we car. saw that the other day. Yeah, we saw it in Safeway. People were selling a shotgun in the back of their car. Yeah, and they were meeting up these two guys, and they were talking to each other and trading money, and the shotgun went from one hand to the other and went into the car, and that was the end of that. Yep, that's America. That is America. <laughs> okay. From Adrian Hargreaves. Really enjoyed your latest video, and I've noticed that you never mentioned the monster. Are you not a fan? Cheers again, guys. Uh, again, it's they're a little past my my time. And they're too big for you, right? Well, they're not too big, but I just I find the sort of the aesthetic is not my thing. Like I've never like in terms of like um, architecture, I've never liked brutalism. And they start to strike me these watches as being sort of a brutalistic watch in terms of their sort of big chunkiness. Um, they're an interesting case design. I've I understand their purpose, and I'm sure they're very legible underwater, but they don't. I don't know, they just, they never spoke to me. I've never seen one that was really, I've never, I've owned a few, and I've looked at them, and I'm like, I don't know, it just doesn't do it for me. Um, and they're new enough that it's rare for me to ever see them in for service. So, I don't know, they just don't get discussed. I don't know, they're just not my thing, sorry. Jim C., can you do a dedicated video about the new 6105 reissue? I'd love your opinion on it. I personally think it was a big swing and a miss. Uh, I'm kind of with you. Uh, it could have been great. As usual, Seiko kind of did a few things that they shouldn't have done. 
and they demonstrated their continued lack of interest in true fidelity to their own heritage. But I would need to see one. So if somebody has, wait, did, did I ever get one in? No, I didn't. I only had the six. No, that's room. why I, you responded to the person that you, you could yeah. get your hands on. Get that. my hands on one. Somebody has one, send it in. Maybe I'm wrong because I've never seen one personally. So if you have one, send it in. Uh, from Randy Novick. I was surprised that you read my comment from the Quartz Watch Service episode. Why not? Well, now that I have your ear question, I have picked up a couple 6139 6005s and a couple 6139 7100s. The former seem to have the correct parts, hands, and dial, though some are replacements. The latter appears to have correct and original dial and hands. My watchmaker, I'm in Denver, suggested that it's a good idea to buy two of any old 6193. Seiko's or is that 6139? 60 he must have transposed them. I uh, pick up so that I have a keeper to wear and a donor for parts. Of course, one pair runs the 6139A and the other a B. What movement parts are not swappable between the A and B variants? Thanks. All the parts that really matter are not swappable between an A and a B. Um, train bridge, chronograph, uh, wheel. Um, clutch, uh, the clutch arms, the control arms, are, are not swappable. They have um, uh, the let's see the the intermediate wheel for date correction is not the same. Their uh, the the ratchet wheel uh, reduction wheel for the automatic winding is not the same. Uh, most everything else is, but I mean the thing that really matters, honestly, the train bridge and the and the chronograph wheel, they they they're completely separate. A and B, they won't swap at all. Uh, so, I don't know. I mean, they're good to have. I mean, it's always better to have more watches than not enough. What? Why are you looking at me? Because we don't have I enough watches. I talked to my mother today, and because the kids are screaming, I locked myself in the bedroom, and I showed her the watches that I was given. She's like, wow, do you need more watches? And then I showed her over the box all your watches. And Just the ones I wear. Yes, and she was like, what? And then she asked if there were watch winders. <laughs> I was like, don't talk to him about watch winders. <laughs> anyway, um, Sam D, since you guys are Trekkies, I was wondering if you have watched the movie Galaxy Quest, a hilarious parody of the original Star Trek series. If you haven't seen it, my wife and I recommend it as a fun little watch that will make you chuckle. Yes, I've, I've we, we own it on VHS. Yay, but we don't have a VCR. We don't anymore. have a VCR, but yeah, I don't even know how many times I've seen it. I've only seen it a couple of times. Uh, really? Yeah. I don't know, man. Um, one of the one of the guys who was in Galaxy Quest was in the first Deadpool movie. Really? Mm hmm. Who? He played the guy that uh, Wade kept calling, uh, who recruited him into this thing. The guy who kept calling oh, him, uh, alluding Smith. to Agent Smith, kept calling him that kind of stuff. He was oh. one of the aliens in Galaxy Quest. Oh, okay. Cool. From generic something. I live in South Central Colorado, Alamosa in the SLV, and I've run into douche bra a few times in my local travels. My question to you, how often have you run into weed bros, like tech bros, but with weed, before you notice them? Also, would you recommend Casa Bonita? Well, first thing is weed bros. I can't think of that weed culture is so big here in Fort Collins that it's... Uh, <laughs> weed culture, beer culture, yeah. brewery culture. Yeah, everybody's big on getting messed up Longboarding up culture, hiking yeah. culture, skiing Oh, surfing, culture. surfing. They also surf if people can believe. Our neighbor across the street has surfboards because they surf on the river. During high water. Yes. So it's all about being outside and getting totally messed up. Yeah, but it's... I mean, there's a ton of, like, young entrepreneurs that are going into these new things. Of, uh, it was breweries for a long time, but we've reached kind of this crazy saturation point. Yeah. But we, oh boy, man, if you want weed, oh, we move here. Yeah. <laughs> They've got lots and lots of it. I don't know. There's sort of that, that unholy mix between, you know, you know, right-wing business entrepreneurship and left-wing... Being a hippie. Being a hippie. I don't know. Uh, they, like, we were in town. We were going to a restaurant. And I saw a, a sign... Um, in front of a pipe shop talking about all the pipes and the sales that they had on the pipes and the bongs. <laughs> it's a different world. Yes, and the Casa Bonita question, back to Randy Novick, actually answered it perfectly. Casa Bonita should be visited exactly once. It's like a Disney version of a Mexican restaurant. Nobody goes there for the food. Can be fun for kids. Hope it helps.
God, I remember the first time we went there with, with Sadie when she was little, and it was just, it was so packed, and there were kids everywhere, and it was like, it was like a bad acid trip. And the <laughs> food know. was so awful. Yeah. The food was so awful. It's like you walk through, like, a cafeteria, and they throw They make you prepay you. for your food. Yeah. You have to prepay for it, because Lord knows you won't pay for it afterwards. Yeah, but I remember when we were still in Massachusetts, I saw that episode of South Park. about Casa Bonita, and I was like, oh my god, that would be the funniest idea of a restaurant. He was like, it is a restaurant. It's real. <laughs> I was like, what? So when we moved here, I was like, gotta go to Casa Bonita, and his one friend was like, okay. And we went, and it was terrible, and not only is it a terrible, terrible restaurant that is overpriced and they make you pay first, it's in a pretty gnarly section of town with, like, street walkers and drug dealers and stuff like that. It's, the whole thing, it's just this unholy Well, mess. we haven't been there in many years. Yeah, but so. I, 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 nothing had changed between from when I was a kid and gone, and when you and I... I know, but Denver's gentrifying. There's no now. way to... The, there's, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just I'm just saying that you don't exactly know. Maybe Randy I, Novick knows, because he's down, down there. there. I have no idea. Casa Benita. Casa Benita. Woo! Okay. From Todd S. Hey, Spencer. As an engineer geek, I love test equipment and seeing how it is used. This looks a little like some equipment I once used for radar work, so the Arnie movement isn't as tight as a 7838 that you rebuilt for me. Uh, that movement seems to be as solid as they come, thanks for the video. Yeah, the 7A movements, they are, ooh, they are exquisitely built and they are bolted together. Those things, there's no, there's no, when that thing goes together, it goes together. It's fully screwed down, everything is metal. It's 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 everything is held in place. All the pivots are are jeweled. Everything is fine. The the Arnie, and I'm actually working on another one, um, finishing it up. Uh, just once we're done with this, I'll do the final adjustments and then get that out. But those are just they're lightly built, and the parts are not screwed together. They're held in association by a couple metal plates that are sort of screwed down. But like a lot of it, it's pretty loosely built. Um, like the connections between like the circuit and the LCD panel are these just these sort of uh, these like rubber sections that have that just sit there and they have they have conductive stripes through them and they're just kind of held in place by the black spacer block and kind of squished in between the LCD thing and it's like you'd think it'd be a hard connection but it's not it just kind of goes together and everything is also all the control things are all meshed together and they're just sort of sitting there, kind of, kind of held in place by this metal thing which snaps. And the problem is, is because it's this loose association, they can be. It often takes me two or three or four times of taking them apart and putting them together and checking to make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be, because I can't just bolt it together and say everything's in the right place. From. Nihat, would you say the practice of casing the movement before setting the hands and installing the crystal is a better approach to dropping in the movement, hands and all, in an already assembled case? Interesting to see your method, as I haven't read many doing it this way. Love your work, and always look forward to the next video. Bring on the Friday fun mail call. Cheers. I'm just, uh, no, I use the case in certain situations basically it's like a, a super movement holder like when I'm pulling apart the back part of it or I or I want to protect it you know overnight in certain ways where it's got to sit for a while and run in I'll use the case for that when I'm doing hands and putting that stuff on there are other movement holders that I use that support the back of the movement and I, I don't assemble the hands and or anything like that um, until the, the case is together the only exception is like the 6139 6,000 X's, 6,005, et cetera, et cetera. Those, you have to have the dial, and the, you have to have the dial in place on the completed movement, and the whole thing assembled before you put the bezel on, because the bezel has to be um, has to be aligned correctly to the dial, to top dead center on the dial, and you, you basically, you can't do it right if you don't have the movement in there. But, just in terms of a tool, I mean, the case was designed to hold the movement, and it's very handy a lot of times to use the case to get that done. Uh, but yeah, hand setting doesn't ever happen in, uh, I think the only time hand setting happens in the case is every now and then if I'm, if I'm having trouble getting an alignment on a quartz where it's going to hit the markers, sometimes I'll do that, but then I'll pull the movement again and then, um, and then build the case and go from there. I just realized something. 
Sadie's binging South Park, she's going to run into the Casa Bonita episode, and she's going to want to go to Casa Bonita. We're not going to Casa Bonita. I don't think they have vegetarian options. They don't have food. <laughs> they have. They must have 55-gallon barrels that are just have slop painted on the outside, and there's just slop A, slop B, slop C, and then a big giant trash bag full of chips and they just take one scoop of each out of the plate and then dump chips on top of it and then give it to you with your water flavored margarita <laughs> margaritas <laughs> it's friday hey you're right from late oh wait not lane edwards sorry you have to wait for, on the ebay video from nagesh katoyo what did you pay for this sir oh uh this gentleman is asking about the 6309-7040 that I bought the other day with this small little text. Um, I I don't like to necessarily name numbers. I didn't pay a bad price. Uh, I didn't I didn't get a screaming bargain. I didn't I didn't pay through the nose for it. Uh, it was a good basic fair price, right about where these stand. Maybe a little bit lower on the median uh, to account for the fact that it had the wrong crystal and basically a destroyed handset, but. I don't know. I think I paid a reasonable rate for it. And now, Lane Edwards, from what I see, the third dial code 6309704MT with the small SUA symbol is made in Singapore and was for non-American market watches. I hope this helps. I, that's interesting information, and I'd be great if I could get some confirmation on that. It would make sense. Uh, it's interesting because the other two dials, they talk about... Um, I mean, like the, like the non-SUA dial with the big long text on the bottom, it talks about where it's made. Uh, but this, that little one, that short one doesn't. Uh, this is, that is a 7040, it's a world model. Actually, I don't know what the second day language is. I don't know. Well, hang on. This is what I complained about. Well, what? And you told me something I should, because I said that I don't like it when you leave and then I have to entertain people, like the guy on the radio in between songs, and he said I should talk about something, but I uh -huh. forgot. I guess I just talked about something. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't know why I didn't check this. So here's the watch that we're talking about. This is the watch that I got off of eBay, okay? And so it's the one with the short dial text here down here at the bottom. So it's, he's saying it's a world market. Okay, I can buy that. It's 7040, so it's not North America. The second day language is Roman. Uh, and that is, I associate Roman with, um, like, a lot of times when you see any of the Austral-Asian ones, 61, 39, 6002s, uh, the silver-dialed, um, uh, the silver-dialed uh, posts, or the, or the Aussie posts, or they're called with the black thing, all those will ha always have Roman English day wheels, like the... So like the Tokizara 6138 chronographs, they're associated with Southeast Asia and Australia. They'll have Roman English. So this could be, I mean, that, that could well be it. You can see there's the Roman day on it. So I don't know. Again, the next thing for me to do is to rip this thing apart. Um, and I want to see if there's a date on the case pack. I found another one of these dials in my supplies. Pretty junked though. It looks like it came from the Philippines, but it's one of these. Um, but it has no dial date on the back. So I don't know. Be interesting to see. Uh, okay, these are from the email. Hi, Spencer and Sabrina. After seeing your interest in the newly fixed 7032719, I thought that's I'd, the sprocket. I thought I'd reach out with a question or two. It's fair to say the 7T series was considered a downgrade on the 7A series that oh, yeah. followed, with the movement considered lesser quality and designed more to be replaced and repaired in service. This was okay for its time, but a problem going forward, seeing as the movement is long discontinued. From your experience with vintage Seiko quartz watches, how much life do you think the 732 movements produced in the 90s and early 2000s have left in them, and which parts are likely to cause problems going forward? Also, do you think it's a series of movement you would ever consider learning to work on despite its difficulties? Find attached some of my own 72. It's just a picture of his own watches. Kind regards, Alex. Hi, Alex. Um, they are designed, Seiko did design them to be serviced because they're kind of in this twilight period when they were going to more truly disposable movements. Like, if you look at the servicing guide for the 732, they're online. 
you can see they have the whole explosion of all the parts and you can see how everything layers together but they are quite complicated um, and almost all the gears and everything they're unjeweled basically and all the gears and everything are plastic because plastic is self-lubricating um, it's very very hard to find any replacement parts for these watches they're long out of they're long out of um, production I've, I've worked on them a few times because, of course, the enemy of these things is the same as the, the 7As, which is water or, or a battery leak. And it'll just des it'll just des destroy them. Um, in, in many ways, they're, they're like a light bulb. They're, they're a light bulb movement um, or a Kleenex movement in that when they go bad at a certain point, there's nothing more that you can do. And you have to, um, and you have to be able to you know, replace them. But because they're quartz, they will just sit and run and run and run and run for five years. So they sometimes will have a lot more wear unless they burn through their first battery and then we're just left to sit and the battery didn't leak. Um, they're very different than a 7A. Uh, 7A is they, it's just like talking about the Arty. Um, that the 7A is fully bolted together, but these things, these 7Ts are, I don't know, they're sort of oddly built, man. Like the, like, and they're, they're, a lot of engineering design went into them. Uh, like the 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 R and D behind them was pretty amazing, but I don't. They weren't made to last forever. It is what it is. It's too bad, man. Because I mean, Sprocket's a great watch, but I've got a number of those movements now, and I only have one that runs. From Todd Shuck, Howdy Spencer and Sabrina. Two questions for the original Kakume with a bad dial, is it worth restoring it with an aftermarket dial since original good ones don't exist sure. or just use it for parts? And for an original bolt head that has what I believe to be a set of Seiko service hands, is it better to just keep it as is when it's time to restore or should I put it back, should I put back the factory handset? Uh, if it were me, I'd put back the factory handset, talking about the second question first, because those hands aren't actually terribly hard to find. I, I, I have a good number of them. They're not, they're not hard to find. Uh, so I would put back the factory handset. Um, on the first one, I unless that watch, that Kakume, is really super duper duper worked over, I would never use it for parts. Um, I mean, I'm seeing wrist shots on Instagram now of, of guys with champagne dialed Kakumes that are pretty decently faded but people seem to really like them. Um, so, I don't know, you, you've talked to me a lot about this watch and about the damage to the clear coat. I still have never seen, I don't believe you've ever sent me a picture of it. Why don't you send me a picture and let me look at it? But, you know, I'd say restoration is almost always gonna be better than, than, than not. But, the replacement dials I've seen are getting better and better. And at a certain point, I mean, originality is gonna get trumped by just the, the pleasure of looking at the thing on your wrist, so. I don't know. Send me a picture of your dial, and we'll see. We'll go from there. But you know, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> what? Okay, Forrest. You know that movie came out twenty years ago, like three days ago. What? Ah, uh, I feel so old. Hey, try being fifty-one. Whatever. You get it easy because you're male. Do I? Yeah. Hey, I got a recliner. Yes, you do have a recliner. Okay. Anyway, that's about it. There's a. I don't think there's going to be too much going on this weekend. I have another video for um, yet another baby Arnie that I'm going to upload because I'm basically done with that watch, and, uh, and that should be fun. If I ever get any time, I, I'm still planning on doing uh, the restoration video for 6105-8009, uh, but we've got tax crap, and I've got to move wood this weekend, and the garage is a hellish wreck, and I've got to look for a glue gun, apparently. You don't have to. If you see it in passing, please make me aware. Okay, will do. Other than that, thank you so much for your questions. Please keep them coming. And if I didn't answer something to your satisfaction, poke me on it. Um, and uh, that's really about it. Okay. Well, coming to the end of July, which means it's almost August. Which means school starts soon. Very soon. Yay. Not soon enough. <laughs> okay, thank you, folks. Bye.